there doesn't seem to be any doubt that this aircraft was attacked in one form or another. In fact, the biggest debate at the moment is whether it was a bomb on board or a missile that actually struck it from the ground. One of the most striking things about that is the way it's taken for granted that in Russia, this is a normal and natural way of dealing with the enemies of the state. It's barely raised an eyebrow. We need to wait until it's absolutely 100% certain that this was Yevgeny Prigozhin on board before assuming that he is actually dead. Because another feature of dealing with Russia that analysts of Russia get used to very quickly is that so often nothing is what it seems on the surface. And what the Russian state says is often very different from what's happened in real life. In fact, some people are suggesting this might be a means for Prigozhin to fake his own death and disappear because, after all, he already knows that he's a marked man. As soon as he raised this mutiny against Moscow, he put a target on his own back. And there might be a reason for him. He wants to drop out of sight. Putin comes out of this looking stronger. This was the kind of theatrical means of dealing with a potential opponent that seems to be the norm in Russia for demonstrating that you should not stand up against power. For as long as Prigozhin survived, he set a dangerous precedent because he said to other people that you can confront Moscow and live to tell the tale. And that may have given other people ideas. Now, those other people that might have been thinking of making a stand for themselves will be rapidly reassessing their risk calculus right now after realizing that, yes, as so often before, Russia's power has caught up with somebody that challenged it long after the event. It's not yet clear how Putin and the Kremlin are going to respond to this incident and how they're going to play it. As we speak now, there's been silence up until now from the Kremlin. Now, it could be that Putin will come up with another angry denunciation of Prigozhin in the same way that he did during the mutiny. Or it could be that this will all be blamed on Ukrainian saboteurs or possibly even the Americans or the British. Wagner's leadership may have been eliminated, but that doesn't mean that the rest of Wagner doesn't still continue to pose a problem for Russia. You have a group of well-armed, well-trained, probably very angry people now within Russia that the state will need to know how to deal with. They've attempted to absorb some of them in, into the army. They've attempted to pack some of them off to neighboring Belarus. Neither of those initiatives have been particularly successful russia and ukraine that this will have an effect wagner has been one of the leading elements of russia's campaign for influence across africa and they've been a key ingredient of the pattern of coups across central africa lately now that the leadership of wagner has been removed it remains to be seen exactly how that organization is going to continue to be coherent and exert power on behalf of russia across those countries or whether it will actually be a severe setback to russia's program of global influence